Today I'm hiking up Barlow Butte, but before the snow falls. This might be a rare adventure for a lot of people who actually come out here because usually people do this in the winter time. But I'm planning to come back in January to get the winter bonus points. And I haven't done it yet this year, so I might as well do it now. There's this nice trailhead, has a picnic table here, the parking area is back there. The first trail you see here on the right is the Pacific Crest Trail. Do not go up the Pacific Crest Trail because that won't get you where you want to go. Here's the Barlow Road Wagon Trail. That might go where I want to go, but I'm going to ignore that for now. Here the trail goes this way. So I'm going to follow the trail that I know worked in the winter time to get me nearby where we're going. When you get to this gate here, you'll come from that direction. The parking area is that way. When you get to this road, walk down this road a ways because that's what's gonna to lead to the actual trail. The trail that's up here at the top of the road is just the Pacific Crest Trail, and if you continue on that way, you'll end up at Timberline Lodge eventually, which is pretty cool, but that's not where we're going today. Okay, this is the intersection where you wanna peel off the road. I have verified that yes, you can, in fact, take the wagon road down to here. So up there, peeling off to the left is the wagon road, and the wagon road will lead back to the trailhead where the Barlow Road intersects with the Pacific Crest Trail. I'm gonna swing the camera to the right now, and you can see here, this is a continuation of the Barlow Road to the right, and then the trail that you want goes here to the left. It's not marked with anything except for those diamonds up on the tree, because this is primarily a ski destination. But there's no reason to not just hike down this. I started hiking today with every expectation of getting rained on. So I am wearing rain gear, I have a rain cover on my pack, and even though I am wearing trail runners, uh, I am wearing waterproof socks with those trail runners because once your feet get wet, you're going to be miserable the rest of the time. So I think I'll be all right. I have an umbrella for my radio. I brought not my entire tent, but I did bring the ground cover for my tent. The footprint. I brought the footprint. That's what we call it for my tent. It's a beautiful November day here in the woods. I checked hand QSL and we are in the middle of a minor solar storm today. So I'm bringing my single sideband setup along with my HF antenna. Maybe the uh, proton cloud will have passed over us by the time I get to the summit, but I won't count on that. So that means I'm gonna hope that between my HT and the IC705, I can get enough VHF and UHF contacts in order to activate the summit. If that doesn't work, I will also try FT8. I checked PSK Reporter this morning and it looked from PSK Reporter like people were still getting out on FT8. So fingers crossed. Welcome to the next intersection. This is only a quarter mile from the road that I left a minute ago. And there is a sign here that says Mineral Jane Ski Trail going up and Barlow Butte Trail 670 going up. You can trust this sign. So don't go to the right. If you go to the right, you'll end up at Devil's Half Acre. Anyway, that's not where we're headed. Go to the left in order to end up at the top of Barlow Butte. See you at the next intersection. We're less than a mile in, but already this is exactly the kind of fall hike that I love. It's not windy, it's cold. The ground is nice and damp. The air is fresh. There's sun breaks coming through the clouds. And as far as hikes go, these woods are really quite lovely. Okay, welcome to the next intersection. This is the intersection with 670 and then Mineral Jane. That's the Mineral Jane ski trail ahead of us. And then this over here is gonna be trail 670. When you're on skis, you continue up the Mineral Jane ski trail, but you don't care about that unless you're on skis. Hey, check out the sun peeking through the uh, trees there. That's pretty beautiful. One thing I'm noticing as I'm heading up is that this trail has not seen a saw in a while. There is a lot of blowdown like this that you're gonna have to navigate over. This is the next point of interest on this approach. I've hiked 994 feet, let's, let's say a thousand feet, over 1.6 miles to get here, almost to the top of Barlow Butte. Barlow Butte is right behind me. Barlow Butte is not the activation zone though. Uh, the activation zone is Barlow Ridge, which is that way, and Barlow Ridge is along there. So there's about two or 300 feet of descending and then climbing again, it looks like at least, to get to the top of Barlow Ridge uh, over about another mile or so. 
So uh, I made that mistake when I skied this six months ago as I thought this would be the activation zone. It is not. And the friends I was skiing with definitely didn't want to go back out to Barlow Ridge for any reason whatsoever because we wanted to do two laps on Barlow Butte. Also keep that in mind if you're backcountry skiing, don't take your adventure-minded friends with you who want to ski primarily because they're not going to like this. Anyway, the, the view out, to the, out behind me is pretty nice. Uh, especially for what I was expecting to be a rainy day. I'm gonna come off the ridge here. So if you wanna go to the top of Barlow Butte, you go that way, there's no view up there, so I wouldn't bother. Uh, actually, the view out to that cliff is better. Let's take a look at where you actually go down and start heading toward Barlow Ridge, where the actual activation zone is. And it's right here. And as you can see, this trail doesn't get nearly as much use as the Barlow Butte Trail does. I would guess that a lot of people aren't even aware that the hike can continue and probably don't see a reason to continue. Somebody has put a little rock care in here, as you can see, to kind of mark the intersection. So somebody does care. By linear feet, we are 4,632 feet in distance from the activation zone here with 208 feet of elevation remaining. So we have to go down an elevation and then up another 208 feet before we'll be at the top of Barlow Ridge because Barlow Ridge is 5,180 feet. And I think this one is like uh, a 5,000, there's just a little over 5,000. So a couple hundred more feet, which makes sense. That's why Barlow Ridge is the, uh, is the actual summit and not Barlow Butte. Steep hiking. So far, so good. That trail does come out onto a nice view of out on the ridge. So this is cool. I didn't expect this. This is a decently exposed ridge line. So that adds some interest to the hike. Holy larch. Wow. Um, I hope you can see that on the GoPro. What a, oh, what a neat little find. Um, I'm gonna get to where I can view that valley better down there, but there are a bunch of bright, bright yellow larches out there in that valley. So what a lovely, joyous little find. That is cool. Yeah, wow. But just that view alone makes it worth it. I have a soft spot for larches. I love them. And that's that. The rain is here just as I'm getting, I'm almost ready to activate. That's totally how this works. Kilo Delta 7, Quebec, Oscar Whiskey, CQ Soda. Alpha Bravo 6 Delta. Alpha Bravo 6 Delta, QSO. QSO, QSO, you're about a 4x3, by 4x3. Three, by three. Copy the 4x3, I got you a 5x5, five 5x5. By five, five by five. Roger the 5x5, five by five. thanks for the QSO. Thank you for chasing in 7-3. Kilo, Delta 7, Quebec, Oscar Whiskey, CQ Soda. Whiskey Bravo 6, Papa Oscar Tango. Whiskey Bravo 6, Papa Oscar Tango, QSO. QSO, QSO. All right, got you five and five. This is way better than I was expecting during a solar storm. Oh, yes, I didn't even pay attention. Yes, uh, <laughs> that would account for some of the problems I've been having. Um, yeah, you're five and six, five and six in Northern California. Sound good. Copy the five and six, and you popped up to a five nine, so you sound great. Thanks for chasing. Okay, have fun, seven three. Thanks in seven three. Okay, we're qualified. I got eight total QSOs. Now, the interesting thing about the QSOs that I got today is that I had only two QSOs on two meter FM, and I had three QSOs on 40 meter single sideband, which was pretty cool. 40 meters was a bonus. I wasn't expecting HF to work very well today. And then I got three single sideband two meter contacts. So the band versatility and the mode versatility that IC705 really saved this activation. I could not have qualified on any one of those single bands or modes, but because I was able to do mixed modes and mixed bands, I was able to qualify this summit. This two meter Yagi was really nice to have. I ran it 
vertically polarized for both FM and for single sideband and managed to make my contacts that way. Just having it strapped to this fiberglass pole. Overall, it worked really well. The hike wasn't too bad. The hike itself was 1300 feet of climbing with 2.7 miles to get here. So not too bad. So it'll probably end up being about 1600 feet of climbing by the end of the day. No complaints there. I was expecting rain earlier today and it hadn't started raining yet during the whole entire hike up, but it is definitely starting to rain now. So I'm gonna hurry up and get everything taken down. It takes a little while to break down that Yagi. So I need to give myself time to get that done correctly. Thank you for chasing and thank you for watching. Get out there and go play with your radios and 7-3 everyone.